This series will go over some of the basic principles of Katana, so if you're picking it up for the first time, this is a really good place to start. And we will be making the scene files available as we go along, so you can get hold of the scenes and um, follow them throughout the tutorials. So we will be using 3D Lite, and this ships with Katana 3 v1, so if you have it, 3D Lite will already be set up. And if you're using any other renderers, then this tutorial series can still help, since general workflow doesn't really change across different renderers. So before I start, I'd like to point you towards different places where you can already find tutorials and documentation related to Katana. So if you go on the help section up here and hit online help, then this will take you to the Learn Katana page and you can see the documentation and already existing tutorials and this can be a really good place to refer back to. Um, if you go to the help section then you can also find example projects and so these are already existing scenes that you can just select and open and it's really well documented so the comments are put in, in the form of backdrops and you have comments at every pretty much in every step so you can really follow what is happening. So if I close this and jump back into my scene, I'm first going to give you a tour of the UI to get you familiar with the interface. So we have the 3D viewer, so this is where um, you view the 3D assets in your scene, so your cameras, your lights, your geometry, and you can navigate in this by scrolling to zoom in and out, by middle mouse button drag to translate, and out left button drag to rotate and then F if you want to focus your view on an object, but right now I have nothing selected. So our viewer is empty, but we do, we do have elements in the scene. So when you open any Katana scene, your viewer will always be empty. And this is because your scene graph is collapsed. So if you start expanding things, to start revealing some of your scene elements, and if I go down to my geometry and um, once I get to the mesh level, then this will appear in our 3D viewer. And if I hit F, then you can focus your view on that asset. If you double click on the root uh, level of your scene graph, this will collapse everything. And if you double click on it again, this will expand everything. So now we have visibility over the entire content of the scene. And the idea is that if you have a really heavy scene with lots of geo, you don't necessarily need to see everything in the 3D viewer. So you can really be selective and really only see what you need. So the deferred loading element in Katana is really useful because you only really process that data if you're calling it in the viewer or if the renderer is calling it while rendering. So if you have a huge terrain, for example, and you don't like how one element is looking, you could um, send a quick preview render, so that's what I've done over here, and um, using this little color picker, so if I just collapse everything first, using this little color picker, if I do control um, left button click or drag, as I'm doing right now, then um, you can drop it on an element and then hit this little arrow, say select and scene graph, and this will take the path and then display that asset. So this is how you can use the scene graph to control what you are processing and viewing in the 3D viewer. And you can also use the monitor to help you identify certain assets. So we're now going to take a look at the node graph. So this is pretty much the heart of your scene. So everything is being driven by these nodes. So the way data flows in Katana is from top to bottom and by using the viewer flag so you can activate these by if I zoom in to um, zoom in you can see this little box over here if you if I select this this will activate the viewer flag or if I hover over a node and hit V on my um, keyboard then this will this will activate the viewer flag also so if I just collapse this and walk down my scene then you can see so first of all we have our geometry and then we're bringing in our camera so this is appearing over here and then we have our materials, and then finally we're adding our lights. And um, this is how you can really see the state of your scene at any particular point and um, kind of track what is happening. Now we're going to take a look at the parameters tab over here. So this will display the parameters of the nodes for which your edit flag is activated. So you can do this by 
selecting this little box on the right. So this will activate your parameters tab. As you can see, this is updating. And if you want to display the parameters of multiple nodes, what you can do is while hovering over your node, hitting Shift and E, and then you'll have visibility over the parameters of both nodes. And um, if you hover over any node and hit E, this will just it'll display that parameter on its own. So these are the tabs we will mainly be working with in this series, but you can take a look around and um, some of the other tabs and see what they can do. Now this was a very brief overview and I will be going into more depth as we go along. So one last thing I want to add is please comment, give us suggestions. This will give us a better idea as to what to cover in future videos.